Hello and welcome to class. Today I'm excited to guide you through a slow but still strong vinyasa flow sequence. Although it's a slow flow, it doesn't mean it's gonna be gentle or easier because we are holding poses for a longer time, at least five breaths, some of the poses even up to one minute. So you can imagine if you're holding plank for a minute or dolphin pose or something, it will get strong over time. And this is exactly what we want. We want to create this strong physical sensation from within while we are in those poses. And then especially when it gets challenging, you really want to focus on the breath and use this physical challenge as an invitation to be even more present and to be even more with your breath. Lots of you requested a class like this, so I'm very happy to finally provide it. We read all the comments and we read everything that you give us as input, as classes that you want. We add it to a very long list of two film videos and so it takes sometimes a few weeks or even months to put the content out but we ultimately want to provide something for you that's meaningful and that you find useful as well. So thank you for providing your input and letting us know what you would like to see more on this channel. If you like long classes, I mean 60 minutes at least, sometimes even up to 75, 90 minutes or even two hour long classes, we have those available too. Lots of requests come for those long classes, but they are not on YouTube. You will find those long classes on Patreon our exclusive membership platform. You can check the description below. You will find all the information there. For today's class, all you need is your mat. And we will begin on our back in half Shavasana with the legs bent. So come onto your back, keep the legs bent, feet on the ground. Let's take a moment to arrive, close your eyes. Feel the breath coming in and out through the nose. Notice the support from Mother, from Mother Earth beneath you. Maybe you feel your yoga mat or your carpet. Maybe the grass, wherever you're practicing. Reconnect to that foundation for a moment as you continue to breathe nice and slow through the nose. connection to the body is so important because it's teaching us so much about ourselves. Oftentimes it's, it's challenging us to be more present, especially in a slow class like this when you're holding shapes and poses for a long time, it might get challenging. And that is really the invitation then to breathe even slower, to fully focus on the breath coming in and out of the body. When you feel like you want to now leave the pose or set the knees down or give up or pause, before you do that, and you always have the option to, I want you to ask yourself, are you doing your best? And can you focus just a little bit longer on the breath? And perhaps this is your intention for the practice today. Otherwise, I invite you to set any intention for the practice that works for you to make this practice today your own. Since we're holding the poses for a lot longer, there will also be more periods of silence. I will give some cues in the beginning as we enter each pose, but then Remain quiet and breathe with you. At least I will do my best. But of course, I cannot just only name the poses. There are so many safety cues I need to give so that you stay safe at home. Since I get do not get any feedback from you, I cannot see you. Bring the heels closer to your hips, press into the heels, lift your hips up for bridge pose. Keep a gap between your chin and the chest, engage your glutes, lift your hips up high. 
if you like come more onto your shoulder blades and then to activate even more pull your heels up towards the shoulders just a very subtle movement a very subtle pull but it engages the entire back side of your body especially your hamstrings very important to activate and use those and let's stay here breathe nice and slow through the nose find this balance in the pose between ease and effort so you're not working too hard but also not too little just in between the sweet spot is where you want to be and then breathe in this spot in this position it is where you can find perhaps some more stillness and make this a very meditative practice although it is challenging Let's take three more breaths here. Deep breaths into your belly, start to engage your ujjayi breath. Last deep breath in. Exhale, release the hips slowly back down to the ground. Great way to activate the glutes first thing. Bring the knees together, relax here for a moment. Let's continue with happy baby. Two options here, you can first hug the knees into the chest, then you grab behind your knees and pull the knees up into the chest, especially if it's early morning for me, uh, for you. For me, it's early morning too, just 6 a.m. or something right now, so it's still early for me, first time I'm practicing today. Maybe it's the same for you, so take it easy. Or if you feel more open, you can also grab the outside edges of the feet. Gently draw the knees towards the armpits. Just a gentle opener here for the inner thighs and the groin. Reconnect to the breath nice and slow. If you want to rock side to side or straighten one leg and then the other, of course, you can go ahead and move around. There's no reason to hold still. Even though we're going to be holding poses longer, you can always do some micro movements in each pose if that feels right for you. And slowly release, hug knees into the chest, rock forward and back if you want to. We will all meet in a tabletop. Cross your ankles, roll over your knees, come onto all fours, we are just on your mat. Make sure the shoulders are right above the wrists, the hips above the knees, and then draw the hands closer to the knees. Very good. Spread your fingers a little bit wider, but not too, too wide. Let's warm up the wrists for a little. Keep the arms straight, move forward as far as you can, and then back. Forward and back for three, two, and one. Lean back, internally rotate the hands five times, forward and back, forward and back. Three, two, and one. Lean back and externally rotate the hands. Forward, back, forward, back. Three, two, and one. Very good. Stay on your toes. You are still stretching out the toes and the feet. 
Now ex uh, externally rotate your hands more, the fingertips are pointing away from you, lean to your right, lean to the left, to the right, to the left. Let the palms lift up if they want to. Let's go for three more, two, and one. Very good. Now last one for the wrists, the fingertips are pointing towards the knees. Keep the arms straight, stay on the toes, lean back. Let the palms lift up, breathe more into the forearms. So important to warm up the wrists. I do it in every single one of my own practices and I would say 99% of the classes here on the channel. It's just so important to take care of the wrists before you put sometimes even your whole body weight on your hands and wrists. Move around if it feels right. Just see what's coming up. Intuitively, your body will tell you what to do and what to move and how to move. Follow that. Very good. Sit on the heels, but stay on the toes. Shake out the hands. Witnessing the sunrise here right now. So it will get bright and hot for me. I can already see it. Beautiful job. When you feel ready, come into a downward facing dog. Send the hips up and back. Walk your dog if you need to. Pedal one heel down towards the ground and the other. Just move around in a way that feels right to you. Especially if, the, if it's the first time practicing for you today. Take your time to arrive. Bend the knees a lot. The heels are lifted. Push the chest towards the thighs. Ground into the inner hands. Right between the index finger and the thumb. If you feel like it, straighten your legs more. But they do not need to be straight. It doesn't matter if they are straight. The function is really to open up the shoulders, move the chest towards the thighs. I really like to rotate my heels to one side. That gives me a nice side body stretch. So if I le lean and rotate my heels to the left, I feel a nice sensation in the right side upper body. Maybe you feel the same. Try it out. Maybe it doesn't feel good, then you do something else. I'm also just doing here what feels good in my body. And I invite you to do the same at home. Over to the other side. Keep pressing into the inside part of your hands. Keep the arms straight. Externally rotate the upper arms. If you want more cues and you have some questions about upward dog, downward dog, plank and chaturanga, those foundational poses that we use so much in vinyasa yoga, we have very detailed tutorials on those poses as well as many arm balances we broke down, lots of advanced arm balances as well. So just check out the channel here, look for those tutorials in the tutorials playlist or you look below in the description after the video. Let's stay here for a couple more breaths in silence. Reconnect to your breath and to your intention. Let's start to release the elbows down to the ground for dolphin pose. Ideally the forearms are parallel to another. Now we continue with opening the shoulders, move the chest towards the thighs, find a slight bend in your knees. Grip with your fingertips and the inner hands into the mat. And breathe nice and slow, really focus on opening your shoulders up. If it, gets if it gets challenging, can you breathe even slower, deeper, fuller? This is what it's all about. Find this space of ease and effort. May you feel balanced and then breathe. Let's do a couple more breaths, especially if you now start to feel it, at least I start to feel it. 
That's when you want to stay just a bit longer and breathe. Keep the form good, don't get sloppy and, and uh, maybe end up injuring yourself. Of course, before that happens, set the knees down, take a break. But oftentimes, especially with those strength requiring poses, you can push it a little bit more. If you're not going into any deep back bends or if you're working on flexibility where you really don't want to go deep. But if it's about strength, you can push a little bit more. Very good. Now from here we are moving into a chaturanga. So you shift forward, look forward towards the thumbs and the elbows lift up off the ground. You will meet in chaturanga. If you have never done this transition before, give it a try. Chaturanga we hold just for 10, 9 elbows in, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release all the way down. Very good. Readjust on your mat if you need to. Very good job. Now bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Lift your chest up, your hands up, lift the thighs up for locust pose. Press your hips into the ground, especially focus on engaging the glutes and move and lift the thighs up a little bit higher. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, keep the breath soft. Such a challenging pose for most of us, for me too. Since we all, even me as a teacher, I still sit a lot at my computer editing all these videos, reading your comments, you know, there's still lots of computer work. And so when you're sitting, you are not engaging your back muscles as much. So for most of us, they are very weak. And so we need to work on those more. Let's hold this here for about three more breaths. Lift up even higher. And release everything down. Beautiful job. Shake out the hips left and right. And then move the hips back for child's pose. Balasana. Let the forehead rest down. Bring the knees wide apart so you have some space for your upper body between the thighs and the knees. I will keep my head lifted a little bit so you can still hear me well. But I want you to fully relax and relax the forehead down. Deep breaths into the belly. Feel the lungs expand on your back side of the body as well. Deep breaths, nice and slow. If you would like to continue, I will meet you in downward facing dog. Send the hips up and back. Beautiful. Roll through the spine forward for plank pose. Push the ground away, firm into the inner hands. We want to not have a straight line from the shoulders all the way down to the heels. Watch my plank tutorial video, I explain everything why about it. Lift your hips up a little bit higher, tuck your tailbone to activate the core more. Keep the glutes as, as well engaged. Externally rotate the upper arms and breathe. Now bring the feet together. Side plank on the left side. Come to the knife edge of the left foot. The right foot stacks over the left. Reach your right arm up. Push your hips slightly forward and lift your left hip a bit higher up. Hold it there and breathe. Continue to Take care of your foundation, which is in this case your left hand, firm into the inside of the left hand. Right between the index finger and the thumb. Really important to put the weight there so that you take care of your wrists and keep them safe. Now lift your right foot up off the left. We're holding it here. Nice and slow breathe. You feel the engagement in the hips and the core from the center of the body. So much stability is coming and being created. Now look to the front of the mat inside your left hand. Slowly step the right foot there for pyramid pose. Straighten both legs. Step the left foot forward to shorten your stance. The fingertips are on the ground. Maybe palms on the ground. Maybe hands on blocks if you need them. 
can also grab your own own shin deep breath in to lengthen exhale to fold gently pull the right hip more back at the same time keep a micro bend in your right leg so you're not hyper extending the right knee and stay there and breathe and slow ujjayi breath in and out through the nose keep the lips sealed if you want to walk your hands over to the right or to the left you can of course go ahead and do that if you feel like going deeper tuck your chin to the chest to lengthen more the fascial back line Rebend your right knee, shift forward, come forward to standing on the right foot. We're meeting in tree pose. The left foot goes inside the right shin or inside the right thigh. Hands to the heart, stand tall, press into the palms, engage your pecs, your chest muscles, and as well as your arms by pressing more the hands together. If you fall out of this, it's all good. Just notice how you talk to yourself. If you are mad at yourself or if you're talking to yourself in a negative way, it's all good. You are in the end here. You're showing up or you showed up to practice. That's already really amazing and there is no bad practice. As long as you show up and you practice, it's a good one. And then just get up and try again. Try to balance here. Also, every day is different. Some days are easier to balance. Feels like it's effortless. And some days it's very challenging, and that's okay. Once you're balanced, push the hips forward. Pull the left knee more back to open up the left hip. It helps to gaze at one point on the ground or in front of you that's not moving. This is what we call our focus, our focus point, our drishti. And there's many different kinds of drishti. The drishti can be within, focusing on your third eye, for example. It could also be something external, looking at a candle while you meditate, or looking down to the ground while you are in tree pose. Beautiful job. Keep the hands as they are. We are now extending the left leg back for warrior three. So bring the left knee to the chest first and then kick it back, send it back for warrior three. Nice and slow, you know you will you know you will be here for a little bit. Hands still at the heart, draw the shoulder blades together a bit more. Keep that right leg mostly straight, but again not hyper extended. But if you really need to bend it. You can also do that. Sometimes it's nice to bend it to activate the quad a little bit more. Focus more on lengthening the left leg, really straightening it back. Send the energy back from the hips to the left heel. Lower the left hip more down, so it's almost on the same height as the right. And for most of us, we think that it's low enough, but it's actually not on the same height yet. So try to lower a little bit more. It's not about having it perfectly leveled, but the action to go there and to really consciously move and do those mini movements. If the right thigh, the right leg and the right hip and glute is starting to talk to you, talk back with some kindness and love and breath. Breathe deeper in and out through the nose.
Very good. Now from here we're coming down into a seated twist. So you bring, you bend the left leg and then bring the left knee outside the right foot. We're doing a Shiva squat down. Set the hips all the way down. Take your time here. Very good. So now we are in a seat. You can now hug the right leg into the chest or for more of a traditional seated twist you hook that arm, whatever it is, forearm or upper arm outside the right thigh and twist here to the right. The important thing here is to inhale to lengthen out through the spine and then exhale twist to the right. And you continue with that pattern as you move just a little bit into the pose. Another important thing here is if the right hip in this case wants to lift up, allow it to lift up. Really do not force the hip down. In certain lineages like Ashtanga for example, they're so alignment focused that people get injured from it. A lot of times they don't want to admit it, but after some time they, they do when the injuries are just very obvious. And this is uh, yeah, not the philosophy I have about movement, not how I teach my classes, it's actually also not how the body moves. So if the hip wants to lift up, allow it to, to lift up. It's a lot better for your SI joint, for the base of your spine. Don't, don't force anything here. The body is so smart, you are not smarter than your body. So if the body is like, I want to lift up here for this twist, then you better listen to the body. Welcome this twist with some more presence and breath. Make this more the internal. What's working in your body? How do you feel your body? How is your breath? Instead of how deep am I in this twist or look today I'm so deep in it. No one cares about how deep you are in the twist. It's all about how slow is your breath and how present are you while you are in it. Slowly release, take your time. We're facing the front of the mat again. Now plant the right foot down. You have to readjust perhaps on your mat a little bit. For this next transition, be careful with your knees as we are coming up for a half moon. Keep the breath going, keep it nice and slow and soft and really feel the right foot, how it has to balance this transition, how it has to do so much work. Half moon is where we're meeting. You can use your fingers as you come up or you just do it without. Uh, I will use, I think, my fingers for now. And we will all meet in a half moon. Stack the left hip over the right. Reach your left arm up. Your right fingertips are on the ground. Draw the navel in, pull the belly in. Lift your left leg higher up. If you want to balance here freely only on the right foot, you don't just bend the right arm but instead you keep the arms straight and then lift your upper body a little bit higher up. And we're holding it here. Lots of really nice footwork for the right foot to be super healthy there and strong and balanced. Maybe you fall, that's fine. Come back up, try again. Give yourself a smile. After all, you have two legs that you can actually do all of, all of this stuff. Not everyone can. Very good. Nice and slow with the breath. We now step the left foot forward to meet the right for chair pose. Bring the feet hip width distance apart. Reach your arms up, take a deep breath in, send the hips back and down. Draw the navel in, engage the core, but keep that natural curve in your lower back. There's no need to tuck the tailbone to really eliminate that curve. If you do that too much over too many years, then you actually lose it completely and 
you kind of have a very stiff and flat lower back and the spine is really not a straight line it's more of a s-shape so emphasize that honor it lift your heels up so we're only on the toes it gets challenging now i know stay with the breath And forward fold, straighten your legs. Inhale to lift up halfway. Exhale, hands down, step the feet back, plank pose. Very good, shift forward, come high onto the toes. Bend your arms, chaturanga. Straighten your arms again, plank. Knees down, elbows down, upward facing dog. Engage your glutes, bring the feet, the legs wide apart. Pull the shoulders back, broaden the collarbones. Off of the heart forward, the chest forward. And look straight ahead. And then pull the head back. So don't tilt it back. Look straight ahead, just pull it back. But watch the upward facing dog tutorial. We explain more why. Hold it there, keep squeezing the glutes. And if that's uncomfortable for the lower back, bring the legs wide apart. On your exhale, downward dog, send the hips up and back. That's all meet here. Start to roll through the spine forward, plank pose. Bring the feet together, side plank on the right side. Reach your left arm up. Firm into the inner right hand. Feel the fingertips grip into the mat. Externally rotate the right arm. Lift your right hip a bit higher up and push it slightly forward. Keep the breath going nice and slow. Lift your left leg up off the right. Internally rotate the left foot a bit so that the left toes are pointing more down. Keep the right glute and the hips strong. Breathe. Look to the front of the mat inside the right hand. Slowly step the left foot there. For pyramid pose, step the right foot forward, straighten both legs, hands or fingertips down to the ground. Inhale to lengthen out through the spine and exhale to fold down over the left chin. Gently pull the left hip back, keep a micro bend in your left knee. If you want, tuck the chin to the chest.
release, re-bend the left knee, shift forward, come up for tree pose, bring the right foot inside the left shin or the left thigh, hands to the heart, stand tall, press into the palms, really activate your arms and your pecs, push the hips forward, draw the right knee back, look at one point that helps you balance. Feel the breath coming in and out. Find some more length through the spine, especially grow and lengthen that that part underneath your, your neck, the front side of your neck, underneath your, your chin. Find some more length there to grow taller. The crown of the head is reaching upwards. Just three more breaths. Draw the right knee towards the chest, let's release and then sec extend the right leg back for warrior three. Keep the hands at the heart, draw the shoulder blades together to activate from the hip or from the hips you're reaching forward through the spine, create some length just like a halfway lift. And from the hip downwards, you reach back through the right leg through to the right heel. Lower the right hip more down. Straighten your right leg more. You can also straighten your standing leg, but again, not hyperextend. Or if you want to keep it ba bent and work more on your left quad, you can do that too. Deep breaths in and out through the nose. Reconnect to the breath, into your intention. If things get challenging, refocus on the breath, deep breaths in and out. Come down for a seated twist, bend your right leg, bring the right knee outside the left foot, Shiva squat down for a seated twist. A couple options here again, make it work for you. You can just hug the left leg in or the more traditional variation, hook that arm. Deep breath in to lengthen, exhale to twist. Deep breath to lengthen. Exhale, twist. With your next inhale, slowly release. Face the front of the mat again. We're coming up for a half moon. You can use your hands. Take your time to get there. Be careful with the knees. Be mindful with the knees. Stack the right hip over the left. Left hand down, right arm up. Lift the left hand up off the ground if you want by lifting your upper body higher up. 
Keep that right foot flexed so that the toes are pointing upwards towards you. Lift your right leg higher up. Breathe. Try to really stack the right hip over the left. Keep the left side body, the core engaged. Everything is so active, but at the same time, you, you find that balance too, and you cannot really balance if you're fully stiff. So it's a constant readjustment act. Just three more breaths. And step the right foot forward to meet the left for chair pose. Bring your feet hip width distance apart. Reach your arms up. Pull the belly in. Find some more length through the arms. Reach them higher up. Send the hips back and down. Lift your heels up so you're only on the toes. And exhale, forward fold, straighten your legs. Deep breath in to lift up halfway. Exhale, plank pose, hands down, step the feet back. Shift forward, come high into the toes. Bend your arms, chaturanga, elbows in. Plank pose, straighten the arms, knees down, elbows down, upward facing dog as you move forward and inhale. Keep the glutes strong, engaged, the legs, the feet wide apart. Pull the shoulders back, broaden the collarbones. And then stay on the tops of your feet, shift forward, come high onto the Tops of your feet, bend your arms, chaturanga, plank, chaturanga, up dog, engage the glutes, downward dog. Beautiful job, deep breath in through the nose, open mouth, let it go, two more, just like that. Now walk the feet forward outside the hands for a squat. Set the hips down. Bring the feet together for butterfly. Grab the feet, fold forward and down. Let the knees open up like a book and then fold forward and down. If you not only want to stretch the lower body but also the upper body, then tuck your chin to the chest. Round your back more. Relax here and breathe. Five breaths also here. And slowly release, rise back up. Use your hands to help your knees come back together. Bring the feet down to the ground, a little bit wider than the hips. Hands behind you, fingertips pointing towards you. Lift your hips up, reverse tabletop. Move forward and back. Do whatever feels good for your head. Keep it upright or let it tilt back. Every time you come forward, maybe you feel a slight stretching sensation in the front side of your shoulders, your anterior deltoid. Just be gentle here. And then move all the way forward, send the hips down. Length now through the spine, inhale, exhale as you bend your arms, send the elbows back. 
but keep the elbows close together so they're not flaring out to the sides. Just three breaths here before we come into Shavasana. Let's straighten your arms again. Reach your arms forward, come onto your back. Extend the legs forward, readjust on your mat if you need to for Shavasana. Close your eyes. Palms are facing upwards, the arms are down by your sides. Let the feet naturally fall open. Not for everyone they fall out to the sides, for some people they fall inwards. So just whatever happens for your feet and your legs, allow that to happen. Feel the support provided from Mother Earth beneath you. Again, just like in the beginning when we started, we're now closing the circle again on the back. Feel your mat, feel the carpet, feel the surface, the grass, whatever it is. It's there, it's supporting you. Stop controlling the breath, allow the breath to come back to its natural rhythm. Be proud of yourself for showing up today, for doing the work. Some days it requires some more effort to make it to the mat and then to actually do the practice. On some days it's quite effortless. But it's the same with all things in life. And this practice is teaching us that it's okay that it, it is this way. And to meet and greet every day as it comes, every practice as it comes, every interaction, every action, every task. It's all good. Everything will be okay. Fully relax your body. Relax your fingers, your toes, the feet, your face. Melt, relax, and be. Thank you for joining me today to practice. It's been my honor to guide you again on the mat. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the mat again in the next video. With love and gratitude, Namaste.